intro question at you here. Uh, and I also want to give actually some of my takes on it. Uh, but I'm super curious on your takes on it as well. And the first one that I actually have is how to make tough decisions. So making decisions, making tough decisions is something that everyone throughout their whole life will have to do many, many times, right? And the more tools you actually have in your toolbox on how to help yourself with making those or making tough decisions, the better you can, you can make decisions. And I think it's a really important skill to have more tools in. And I thought it might be really interesting to both learn from each other, maybe some more new tools or to just get a refresher of some old tools that we haven't seen for a while. And for anyone listening as well. Right? So how to make tough decisions. Do you, what are your tools? What are some of the things that you do where you have to make a tough decision? And we can go between this, right? Like you can share a few things. I can share some other things or if all of them come out, you know, go on then. Wow. That's a really good question. Um, for me, I always come, come back to the idea, I think probably Tony Robbins that said it, but God knows he probably didn't come up with it, but decisions are the biggest things that we can make in our lives, you know? Um, and I try not to get caught up in, you know, too much thinking about it. I try to make a decision as quickly as possible so that I can find out if it was the right one and learn from that. That's really a perspective. And so I don't think too much about decisions and therefore there aren't too many tough decisions. Um, tough decisions to me, can you give me an example of what you might uh, think yes. of? Because the ones that I think about are in relationship or whether to move country or not, but sure. that's just my life. So what about you? Yeah, so this question came up because of in recent months, I had to make a tough decision in terms of a relationship or a potential relationship that I that wasn't working. Um, and that's a tough decision, right? So that's an example. I don't know if that brings anything up, um, but I can otherwise share a few of the tools that I use because I've thought a little bit about this question now. Uh, and so it's a bit harder when you haven't to immediately come up with any. So uh, a few of the tools that I actually wrote down are one essential tool is when you have to make a tough decision, sleep a night over it. I think that's such an essential and vital thing for anyone to do before you make any tough decision or big decision, right? Sleep one night over it and have a fresh memory, uh, your brain functioning freshly again you can, clear, you can think so much more clearly when you do that. Super important. Uh, and I think one that you were actually a bit referring to is, I don't know exactly right, right? But, um, and this is the thing with the, the relationship that I was saying, uh, is to, to listen to your gut feeling. You know, like deep down, you do know the answer to the decision that you have to make. And your head with more thinking can make it more foggy, can make it more confusing where your gut feeling, the, the feeling inside, right? What is, feel, like, what is happening there and, and, and listening to that? Because more often than not, it is, it is correct. It, it, like, it knows what you want. Um, I'll share one more and then maybe if there's anything else that came up, I'll let you. Um, this is actually from someone, uh, his name is Derek Sh uh, Sivers. Uh, he's the founder of CD Baby. Um, which is like a, um, a music website. Uh, well, it doesn't matter actually, but one of the things, a quote that he has, that I always remember is that if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And basically what that means is that, and maybe it doesn't apply to everything, but if you're not a hundred percent feeling it, then it's probably a no. Or if it's a maybe, then it's probably a no. But if it's like a hell yes, you know, like a yes that you 100% know, that's a yes. Uh, otherwise, it's probably a no. Um, yeah, I have two more, but I'll let you, uh, if you have any, any other things that come up. Well, to speak to what you just said, I think that's really interesting. And <clears throat> you've used the word feeling quite a lot. Emotions and emotional tension is, is what kind of comes up. And how do we know if we're actually even listening to our intuition or is it just, you know, fear? Because 
the, the, the two kind of related things actually. Mm -hmm. And what helps for me is definitely to sleep on something. That's always a good decision for me personally. Um, some people know already though, you know, and if they wait too long, then, then they start to overanalyze. And so they need to go with that initial kind of decision first. So it depends what kind of person you are. But for me, mm -hmm. it helps to sleep on something. Like, you know, when you kind of go into a shop and you, there's a thing that you think, oh, that's really cool, I want that. That's a lot of money. Okay, do I need that? Ah, yeah, but mm, go away. Do I still want it like, you know, two or three days later? Yeah, yeah. then, right, it's just kind of that, oh, there's, there's something there and I feel like I want it. In terms of a relationship or a big decision like that, or anything where you're committing to a very different kind of future, potentially, mm -hmm. it really helps me to just kind of sit with, and it comes back to feeling again, because that's really how we make decisions, right? Is to sit with it and then, okay, imagine that future, for example, your example, with that person as it is, or an improved version of that. And are you kind of feeling good about that? Are you open, are you expanding, or are you kind of contracting and, and sitting into what your body is actually doing? Mm -hmm. That requires a level of sort of, um, uh, connection to the body right but we don't have to be some kind of like guru to, to be able to tap into that it just takes a moment of presence then the opposite okay how am I going to feel when I'm not with this person and again just tap into that sense of opening con or contracting and to use more kind of simple language it could also be something like you know relief <laughs> a lightness you know and your body doesn't lie it's like, okay, it's true. most of the time in these tough decisions, we're actually just trying to avoid the feeling that's going to come when we have to let that person go uh -huh. in some way, really. Um, and so then it's like, and your body will know that. Be like, nah, I need, I need to get away from this, actually. Otherwise, that question would really come up. Um, so relationships is a special one for me. Um, but that's generally how I would uh, feel into uh, most tough decisions, you know, like, I was living in Bali. Do I go back to Europe now? Do I move to China? Mm. You know, part of me was thinking about the money and the security that, that was going to buy me moving to a certain place for a certain time. Well, that's a pretty cool thing to have, right? But is that what excites me? Like, where's my heart? And if my heart was in Europe, you know, mm. I could feel that. It's like I'm more excited about being where I am now. And so I made the decision based on that. If it's, if you make a decision and you know that you're making a decision based on safety, certainty, financial security, um, that's a pretty limited place to make a decision from. That's, that might serve you, make you feel safe, but as we know in life, nothing's safe, nothing's certain, especially this year. Mm -hmm. So what's the point in holding on to that? If you're penniless or in massive debt, I, I get it. <laughs> sure. But if most decisions are, are being, that's an extreme, but most decisions are being made from that place of, I just want to feel safe, that's, um, that's going to lead to a, a, a limited way of experiencing life, I would say. Yeah, love that. Um, yeah, we so often just use the head to make a decision, but forget the body actually, which is, yeah, an essential part of your whole everything, right? So it will be also good to listen to it a few times more because it helps to make tough decisions. Uh, two more things that I just want to add here of, of what I had. Um, so this is actually one that I recently sort of discovered from a person named Kevin Kelly. Uh, and it, it is, it's kind of, par I'm paraphrasing what he wrote down, but if, what if it will be tomorrow? So basically what it, what it means if it's easy to make, um, to make a decision to do something in a month, say with someone that you want to do a travel, it's easy to say yes if it's going to happen in a month, right? But if you would actually, even if it is a month, but if you would actually take it to what if it will be tomorrow, would I still say yes on this? So to, to, to the, the urgency to kind of make it more urgent so it becomes more real. Like when you make a decision or when you are trying to decide on something, try to make it to tomorrow, even if it's going to be in a month or two. But ask yourself, would you still want to do this if it will be tomorrow? And that's actually a, a new kind of tool that I uh, discovered that actually was really helpful. Um, to me. And then the last one is, and this is a bit too with 
with the 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 relationship that I was talking about um, on ending that or telling that person that it wasn't working out for me um, is um, is to like so I, I was able to either because she lives like two hours from from me right and I would I could have just texted her to say like okay it's not working out uh, or I could have called her to do that but both of those two ways aren't so what I mainly want to get to is how do you want to look back on this I think that's a really important thing to make an imp- important decision and to put yourself in 10 years and to think, how do I want to look back on that decision that I made? And am I proud that I made it like that? Because neither calling her or texting her to end it would have been a good decision that I would be happy with. So instead I drove two hours, had a conversation with her and drove back two hours and it was effort and energy, but she totally deserved that. And I'm very happy on that decision. Uh, and so that's also another one that I have. Um, yeah, that's, that's a few of the tools that I use. I like that as well. And it, the question I love to use is, is it a good decision or is it a bad decision? You know, for me, i have like, what's in integrity, you know, cause that is how I'm going to look back on myself. Was that an integrity or not? And I, uh, back in 2008, I was living in a part of Germany and, I was with a, a woman and it was a cool relationship. I relocated to another part of Germany to study and I actually found myself wanting to kind of live there and I did. And the way that I ended it with her was like, this is one part of Germany to the other. This wasn't two hours. This was like, you know, six hours on the train. Sure, Germany. <laughs> it's huge. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, a little bit bigger than Belgium, right? Like, yeah. um, so that was, this was the same quandary for me. And I, this is 12 years ago, I was a young chap, um, but I didn't make a decision in integrity and I avoided that. And so I actually called her up instead. And um, that wasn't a great way to end it. And it's ironically, maybe two weeks ago that we actually got in touch and spoke again for the first time in 12 years. Interesting. And me now was like, look, I'm really sorry yeah. that I, like, I would never have done that in knowing what I know now. I just didn't have the integrity back then. I, you know, I'm sorry that I hurt you, you know, and, and she was like, thank you. And that was really cool. That was beautiful. And so I don't want to look back like that. I don't have many instances like that. But every time I do look back with regret, it's a case of I was too scared to feel something, yep. you know. So it's more a case of the decision fundamentally how I approach it in a different, different angle is what do I want to feel and what am I avoiding feeling? And when we get real with those kind of states of emotions, and then that's really the barrier to making a decision. That question for me, when we can be real with both of those scenarios, then okay, it could be either of those things that we could end up feeling or we would be avoiding feeling. Let's just make the decision and you know just feel what needs to be felt because that's what's holding us back, I think. Yeah. 